In any clinical exam or test, doctors talk about the sensitivity of the test and the specificity of the test. Sensitivity just means that the test can accurately identify the people who have the problem. Specificity means that it can accurately identify the people who don't have the problem. So an ideal test has high sensitivity and high specificity. So now le let's look at some of the tests that doctors use for carpal tunnel. And specificity is, let's talk about some of the medical tests. So a very common test the medical doctor would do would take the reflex hammer and hit the median nerve right over, over the, uh, the carpal tunnel. So if it gave tingling sensations to the fingers, that would be a positive sign. So this test doesn't have a very high degree of sensitivity, meaning it doesn't really identify patients with carpal tunnel. And its, it's specificity is a little bit better at 67%. It, it can identify people who don't have it. Phelan sign, you'll put your hands together like this, and this is something you could do at home, and hold your hands like this for 30 seconds. If you start to develop tingling into the fingers, and these fingers right here, you would have a positive Phelan sign. And that sensitivity for that is 58%, and the sensitivity is 54%. So that's the so-so test. This is about 50-50 on that test. Another test at home that you could do, maybe just take a paper clip and make it into two points, maybe about a quarter inch apart. Close your eyes and just touch your finger. And you should be able to tell whether or not you have one point touching you or two points touching you. So a positive sign is when you can't tell the difference. So that test has very low uh, sensitivity but higher specificity so it rules out people with carpal tunnel. Another test you might find a doctor do is with a tuning fork over it. So this test of the ones that we went through has the highest specificity. So if this test feels normal to the patient typically that's a pretty good indicator that they don't have carpal tunnel. Another test would be a, a hand uh, diagram. You might, the doctor might have a picture of a hand and you're going to draw in the hand where you have the pain. And carpal tunnel is very specific. If you remember from the first video, it's mainly these three fingers and some of this finger over here. Another test they might do is with a pinwheel. And you can do this at home yourself with a pin, just, just tapping yourself. But there should be a difference in what you feel to the pin on this finger, let's say, compared to this finger. Okay. Normally, they should feel the same. And another test that they would look at would be the strength of this thumb here. So if you have thumb weakness going in that direction, uh, there's a good chance you got carpal tunnel. And this is, you, I usually see this when it's pretty well advanced. And this test is uh, about 63% uh, specificity and 62% uh, the other one. <laughs> but it, it, it's a fairly good test. Once they have that, the, once you have that, there's a pretty good chance you've got carpal tunnel. So some of the most uh, better predictors of carpal tunnel and a positive outcome for an EMG test, because you don't want to go through that EMG test because it's painful to start with, but if the patient has a square wrist, so you'd measure the thickness this way and that way and just see if it's pretty square, that's a pretty good sign that there's a good chance you have carpal tunnel because people with square wrist typically have higher chances of carpal tunnel. The flick sign is probably the best test at all, and most of the time doctors don't even have to ask about this. The, the patient will say, yeah, I get up in the morning and I got to go like this, and then I feel better. That sign is like 90-some percent that if it's positive, the pain goes away, they have carpal tunnel, and... Uh, Again, if it goes away, if it doesn't go away and it's still there, they don't have carpal tunnel. Uh, another sign that's pretty good is a closed fist sign. So you'd hold your fist like this closed for 30 seconds and see if you develop numbness through here. As I mentioned before, the electromyelogram and nerve conduction velocity test are the gold standard for carpal tunnel syndrome. 
oftentimes you hear the words EMG or NCV to be used. Although it's a gold standard, these tests can be very painful because for the EMG test, needles are going to be inserted into certain muscles around your hand. So the test is good that it can localize compression at the wrist, but it can't tell the doctor what is compressing the nerve. The nerve conduction velocity test has a very high sensitivity rather a, a mediocre sensitivity and a very high specificity. So th that means it does a great job at identifying what people don't have carpal tunnel, but it doesn't have a great job of finding the people that do have carpal tunnel. Another drawback as this of this test is that it can only be done about four to five weeks after the symptoms begin. So essentially it's only for the advanced stage of the disease. Another thing that's very important that I want you to understand is that if you have a positive EMG slash nerve conduction test, it is a poor predictor of a successful outcome of surgery. So just because this test is positive and you have surgery, it doesn't mean you're going to be happy with the result. Another test that's used at times is x-ray. So the X-ray for carpal tunnel problem is a very special test. And as you can see here, we're looking right up the carpal tunnel. This is where the ligament would be. This is where the nerve is. And all through here is where the muscle tendons are. So with this test, we can identify bone spurs, or if there's a small tunnel, or if the wrist is very arthritic, and that's causing some of the problems of a smaller tunnel. Another test that's useful for carpal tunnel is diagnostic ultrasound. This is the same type of test that a uh, pregnant woman would get to look at the, uh, at the fetus. But with this test, we can actually go and look at the muscle tendons and see if they're thickening or not and see if that's the problem for the carpal tunnel and the compression on the median nerve. There is a new test out that we have at our office. It's called the current perception threshold test. What's good about it is that it's early detec detection of carpal tunnel. You don't have to wait the four to five weeks before you could do the test. It tests the sensory part of the median nerve. That's the part that conveys the sensation of tingling and pain. Just like some doctors can do a hearing test if you have a hearing problem, this test is more of a feeling test. So this test is very s s sensitive and it's pretty s s sp specific. So it's a much better test than the EMG nerve conduction test to determine whether or not you have carpal tunnel. It can be used as, a, as prevention also because if you can do the test and it comes out a negative, there's a pretty good chance that you don't need surgery. You're not going to have any b disability or time loss from work. So one of the questions I get asked is how effective is the CPT screening? Well, Tyson Foods uses the same screening test for one year. And this was their results. There was a dramatic decrease in medical referrals for carpal tunnel. The compensation cost decreased from $106,000 in the preceding year to just $6,000 in the year that they used the CPT test. But what's really important is that not one case during that year required surgical intervention. Previously, there were 10 to 20 carpal tunnel surgeries that were performed annually. Another important aspect of it, using the CPT test, there were no cases that progressed to a permanent impairment. We've been using this test at our office over the last 10 years. And this is how the CPT test is done. There's a slight impulse that comes through into the fingers, and we just ask the patient to tell us when they stop feeling that impulse. It's very simple, and it's, ver and it's painless.